Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another photo P tutorial. Before the video starts, there's something I'm going to be doing from now on. So I'm going to have random codes throughout the video. It might not be in this video, it might not be in the next video, but randomly in some of my videos, I will say a secret code that only people that have watched to that point will know. So say like F1 2018, leave that down in the comments below and you have a chance to win F1 2018, which is a game you can check it out. And so that's how it's going to work basically, but maybe the next video will have it like halfway through it or at the end. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make a Roblox banner really easily and make it look really nice in photo piece. So let's get started. Okay, so once you're at photop.com, all you want to do is click new project, change dimensions to 2560 by 423, and name the project whatever you'd like. I'm just going to name it banner and hit create. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find a background for this banner. So just find a Roblox background or if you have any screenshots you saved and you want to use that as the background, feel free to use that too. You just want to click you just want to drag that file onto your photo P if you have it on your computer, but if you don't, you can Google it. Okay. So I found a background. I know it's not Roblox, but it kind of looks like it. I just looked up Roblox CSGO map. CSGO is just a shooter game, which is kind of the theme I'm going to go for. So find your image, right click on it, copy image, bring it back into photo P and hit control V to paste it. Now you can move it around. And we want to make it bigger. So go up to edit, free transform and drag the box while holding shift. And about right there looks good. Just hit that check mark. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. We're going to try making the background look a little bit nicer like this. Turn it up a little bit like 23, 29 for brightness contrast. It varies for the picture though. This picture is kind of boring. Now we're going to add some blur to it. So go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, change it to about like three, I think. Mm, geez, why is it tripping out? 2.3 works. It okay. Okay. So now let's say you want to bring your Roblox character into this. Just either find one online which you probably won't, but I found one online. So I'm just going to show you how to do this first. Copy, copy the image and then control V like we did at the background. So here this is, but if you have a screenshot of your character and you want to pull them out, I'll show you how to do that because I'm sure you guys want to use your own characters. I just looked up Roblox character with a gun. So <laughs> that's, that's what I found. If I look up Roblox character, I'll find one with the background. That we can crop. Let's just say, uh, trying to find an easy ish one. Well, they're not going to look like that, so I'm not doing that one. Let's just say it looks like this. Just copy it, bring it back to Photo P, Control V. Now I'm going to show you how to crop them out. The so first, we're going to shrink them down a little bit so we can see the full body. Now we're going to use the zoom tool to zoom in and I'm going to use the lasso polygonal lasso select. So what I do is I just click all the way around him. Oops. If you mess up, just hit delete on your keyboard. It's a tedious process, but it's what you got to do. I'll be back when I'm done. Just do this all the way around the body and just connect back to the start. Okay. So I'm almost back to the start. I know it's not perfect, but I'm just trying to show you guys an example. So once I connect back to the start, it'll have a dotted outline. Just hit control C and control V on him. 
and you'll see over here I made a new layer so if you hide this layer you'll see just your character so it looks like this and there you go that's how you bring your character in and crop them out but I didn't really take my time so it looks kind of bad but whatever so we're just gonna use this guy for now on the left and I'm gonna move him a little bit and make him a little bit bigger to about like here I think let me see yeah that's good let me do the same thing I did to the background so image adjustments brightness and contrast image adjustments vibrance like that so now I'm gonna get my text tool and I'm gonna type in my name So I'm going to type in Cambit. I'm going to find a font. Don't, I don't have that one on there, so I'll do Candle Classic. Actually, I'll do Commando because that fits better. I'm going to turn the size up to like 250, I think. Yeah. Hit OK. Now, I'm going to put it about right here and move this layer below this your character. So it's kind of coming out behind him. I think it's a cool look. Let me zoom out. I'm going to move it more to the left. Okay. Like this. I'm going to move him down. Okay, so you can see his hair is like purple and blue. So I'm going to kind of go with that color scheme. I'm going to double click on my background layer. Go to gradient overlay. Change the color. So click on that box right there. Change the color from purple to blue. And just turn the opacity down on it. Let me go back to normal. Like 28. You can adjust it however much you want. I think just a little bit looks pretty nice. Hit OK. Now we're going to mess with the text. So double click on your text layer. Go to gradient overlay. We're going to still use those colors, but turn the opacity up. Change the underglow to white. Change the blend mode to normal. Opacity 100 and turn the spread and size up a little bit. Turn the opacity down actually to about 63. Now add a drop shadow. Turn the spread up to 100. Turn the opacity up to 100. Turn the angle to 90. And turn the blend mode to normal. Adjust the size however much you want and distance. I'm just trying to get that 3D look. So like this, and I'm going to change it to uh, probably a blue, a dark blue, maybe. Or purple. Purple. Okay, purple looks pretty good. Like a darkish purple. I'm going to turn the size down a little bit and the distance. Okay, now hit OK. Now right click on your text once you're done. You can't go back, so make sure you're ready. Convert to smart object. Now double click on it again, and you can add all the effects again. So I can add, this time I'm gonna add a stroke. Make it white. Turn the size up a little bit, and add that drop shadow again, but just change the distance so you can see it come down below it. Like that um, you can add some other effects if you want that's up to you like maybe another drop shadow but it's just black and like a normal shadow that's something kind of fun you could try is going down to this little circle down here called the adjustment layer click that go to hue and saturation you could just mess with the hue and it'll like change your whole color scheme it's kind of cool 
if you want to try that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm just going to stick to what we got now. Okay, now I think we're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to image, canvas size, change that to 2560 by 1440. That is the only size YouTube will accept. I know it may look weird, but it'll only show the inside part. So now just go up to file, export as, PNG, change the quality up to 100 and hit save. And now you're done. I hope this helped you guys. If it did, leave a like and subscribe. Check out my other videos if you're interested. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.